Hello and thank you for joining me for today's full body slow flow yoga practice. We'll start by sitting comfortably. I'm sitting on a pillow and we're just going to take our hands comfortably on our knees or maybe in our lap if we're sitting on our knees, however you'd like to sit. We'll start by grounding the sit bones down and having a nice tall spine, maybe pulling the ears slightly back and bringing the shoulders down as well. And then we can just um, gently close our eyes and take a few moments to sit together and just prepare our mind and our body for this um, yoga slow flow practice. We'll start by taking a couple of nice deep breaths together. Any kind of breaths that brings you in to your center. And with each inhale, it's like we have an opportunity to root down even a little bit more. And with each exhale, it's like we have this opportunity to lengthen out through the top of the head. And we'll do three more breaths together. And just kind of noticing the layers are getting a little bit softer around us, a little bit easier to sit. One more. And gently opening the eyes and sitting our head down to the right shoulder and getting a nice, comfortable neck stretch. And just kind of checking in to see what the left shoulder is doing, just letting it relax away from the ear and getting into the scalenes, into the side of the neck. We'll take another breath right here. And gently taking that right hand, helping the head upright and taking it over to the second side. Shoulders away from the ears. Just letting anything tight kind of wash away that's holding us in the shoulders and the neck. We'll do it one more time. Take that left hand and help the head upright and then we'll take it over one more time to the right side and this time you might even take your right hand and just get yourself a gentle pull with your arm hand onto that side of the head and you could even take your left fingers and kind of put them down towards the floor and get a different stretch in towards the neck and see how that feels let's get another breath here and then gently taking that right hand and lifting the head upright and then we'll take our left ear to the left shoulder and taking the left hand up and around and maybe sliding that right hand down towards the floor, fingertips to the mat. Shoulder stretch, neck stretch, scalenes, all the little fine muscles that are holding our neck and the whole torso bind it together. And make sure we get in there, get a nice good stretch. And then gently take the left hand and help your head upright. And then from here, we're going to take that right arm up and over. And we'll just start with some motion side to side and up and over to the second side. And check in to see how that whole body feels. I'm fairly sore in my body. I've been outside a lot with my dog this way and that way and makes my whole side body gets sore. I think I've been throwing a lot of tennis balls or something running. We'll take it up and over one more time each side. What brings you to the mat? What have you been doing? What makes you come to yoga? Maybe just to unwind and untie knots. And then from here, take the hands onto the knees and we'll just do a little cat cow seated and get into our nice spinal waves spinal wave cat cow style in a seat so we'll do a few more right here inhale exhale sinking that spine back 
inhale, exhale, and coming one more time, just making a nice big wave of the whole spine and then coming upright. And I'm gonna take away my pillow for some circles onto the hips, onto the spine, just circling around, checking IT band, checking rotators, hip flexors. We'll do like five circles this way and then we can circle it away the other way. So we'll do one more here, inhale and exhale. Then we end up in the back and come to that other side and make our circles and kind of getting our hips already slightly a little bit warmed up. We're kind of tapping into them. And we'll do two more rolls right here. Inhale and exhale. And then from here, come upright and come, we're gonna sit onto our toes and we'll stretch the metatarsals. So taking our toes under and sitting down with the seat onto the heels. Now, if this is too much, then we'll come up onto the knees and stretch the toes this way. So anything that works for you, take the arms up to the sky, interlace the hands, take the palms up towards the ceiling and straighten your arms, lift from the side body nice and tall and getting that nice toe stretch. It's like a little toe squad. We'll stay a few more breaths right here. Inhale and exhale and take the hands all the way down. Take the hands behind, interlace, roll the shoulders up and back and take the ears back and maybe the hands stay on the sacrum. That's perfect. Maybe the arms is asking for a, a elongation. Then we can straighten the arms to the back if it works and check that inner and outer shoulder. And we'll stay one more breath here and then exhale, bring it back down. Take the arms back up, interlace the different clasp and take the palms up to the sky. Get into the fingers, the wrists. A few more breaths right here. And then gently take it all the way back down and take your non-dominant clasp back here for one more shoulder stretch. And it just kind of takes a little differently if we switch the hands around, certainly does. So we don't get just one sided, we'll take both sides. Roll the shoulders back, take the ears back, maybe straightening the arms and the elbows. You might feel it in your biceps, in your whole chest and torso as well. One more breath and then exhale, bring it back down. And then from here, take our hands and come to tabletop and give us all a stretch with the hands facing towards the knees, fingers towards the knees. We can just move it around a little bit here, this way and that way. Inhale and exhale. You can walk the knees back a little bit and see how that feels on that underarm. I can certainly feel it. I hope you can too. We'll just check that we get all parts of the body before we start to move. So it's kind of had a good kind of little tap and hello before we make our way into the flow. And then from here, take your hands to the front, take your right foot back and get yourself a little um, calf seesaw stretch, Achilles calf and fold the foot, checking all the little muscles and bones in the foot and the lower leg and just kind of back and forth. And one more, and then we'll switch second side, check the left leg back, toes are tucked under, and give yourself a few back and forth here, checking in with your Achilles and your calves, and maybe it's the knees. A few more breaths. And then gently come back with big toes together, knees apart, and come to child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart, arms forward, and we'll just keep on stretching the arms all the way forward. And we'll pull the belly in and bring ourselves into a nice arch onto the spine and pulling the abdominals in. Lifting the upper arm bones. Taking our stretch in child's pose to the right side. Taking your arms over to the right side and sink down into the left side. You can take your ear, your side of the left temples over to the left bicep and give it a little rest. 
few breaths here and gently bring it up and over second side take your right arm over and take your temples your ear to the right bicep area and sink down into that right side of the body side body crescent stretch a few more breaths right here and gently come all the way back up to the center and come to tabletop you can tuck the toes under arch the spine up to the sky press the palms the knees the toes expand the whole back body and keep that nice hold in the abdominals even though we're doing the opposite we're extending the spine and curving and then exhale, press the palms, the knees, the toes down, extend the whole spine, lift the belly button, and exhale, extend. And one more time, arching the spine up to the sky. Get some good mobility into each and every vertebrae. And then come back to neutral, plug the upper arm bones in, take the knees just slightly back. And you can feel that nice little lift into the lower abs as we take the knees back. And from there, lift up to downward facing dog and take the right heel down and the left heel down and give yourself a little pedal this way and that way. Lifting the upper arm bones. Come up onto the toes, bend your knees, sink your heels to the right side, stretch into the left side of the body. You might even come up onto those left fingertips. One more breath here, and then switch to the second side. Bend your knees slightly, heels over to the left side, and come up onto your right fingertips, stretching to that right whole side of the waist. And slowly come back to the center. Come down onto your knees, take your arms forward, and come to half child's pose, half down dog, anahatasana, or puppy pose. Hips and knees are stacked, arms are at a nice angle, the upper arm bones are lifted, the, knit, the ribs are knitted together. We'll stay one more breath here, and then we'll make our way back up to downward dog. I like to pull my arms in slightly and then come back to our downward facing dog. Walk the feet over to the hands, please. And take a hand in each and elbow, feet are hip widths apart. Give yourself a ragdoll. A forward fold, a swing a little bit this way and that way. Releasing your head, your neck, your shoulders. We'll give ourselves a few more breaths right here. And then place the hands back down and we're gonna come back down onto our knees. You might come sideways on the mat. So we are onto our knees, take the arms up to the sky, take your right wrist over to the left side. One more breath and then gently switch to the second side take your left arm over to the right side and then switch we'll take it up and over one more time loosening up that side body and take it up and over a few more breaths and then gently take it all the way up take the arms out to the side take your left hand down come to side plank supported side plank with your right arm up the left hand is down and the Right arm can come straight up and the gaze can come up right here and you can hold it. And then from here, press into the right foot, into the right hand and get that nice long side body stretch. Take the gaze up and underneath the upper arm. And we'll stay right here, saturating the whole right side body and lifting any stagnation on that right side. And then gently come all the way back up and give yourself a lift up to the center and second side take your left foot out take your right hand down and take the left arm up to the sky just a nice even supported side plank with a gaze up to the sky and we might stay right here inhale and exhale and then taking the top arm over the ear and get in a little bit more to that connective tissue fascia sheet on the whole side body from the hip up to the rib cage and up towards the shoulder one more breath right here and we lift the belly button the whole way and then gently take it back up arms straight up and use the core to come back up onto our knees and then hands down and then now downward facing dog please Adho Mukha Svanasana and stepping the feet all the way over to the hands inhale long spine 
and exhale, fold. Take the hands to the hips, elbows to sky. Bring yourself all the way up to standing. Bring the feet in so that the feet are touching and we're gonna bring one knee in and then the other. So we take the right knee in and send it back down and the left knee in and send it back down. And we'll keep doing that. Right knee in, hugging it in, sending it back down and left knee in and then sending it back down. And really plugging femurs, getting hips nice and warmed up and ready for movement. Hugging it in, taking it back down. So the standing knee is slightly bent. So we have our hip and our ankle stacked above and below each other. We'll do four more right here. We keep it going. And we're finding our balance. Just one more each side. And we'll start to really open up those four corners of the feet and then slowly bring it back down. Inhale, hands up to the sky, palms together. Exhale, hinge and fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back to plank pose, please. Shoulders and wrists are stacked. And we'll stay right here, lifting from knees through quads all the way up to the belly button and to the sternum. One more breath and then knees to the floor, chin and chest to the floor, Ashtangasana, eight-pointed chaturanga. Inhale to cobra, inner shoulder to outer shoulder. And a few breaths right here as we sway back and forth and check in with side body, front and back. And then exhale, bring it all the way back down, push back, child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. Gently make your way up to downward facing dog, please. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step your right foot between the hands and come nicely down into a low lunge. Hanging out right here and checking in with our hip flexor on the left side, with our hamstrings on the right side and elongating out through the spine. And we'll stay right here. Just kind of saturating that stretch into the legs. Had a nice slow flow today. Few more breaths and then exhale, hands to the floor. Step it back, down dog. Left foot between the hands. Then we'll come to our low lunge right here. Extending out through the back leg, bending the front knee over the front ankle. Support yourself with your hands, but also support yourself with the core holding that belly button, awareness to the belly button. Extending the back leg, coming up high into those back toes, just like in the beginning when we stretched out from tabletop. One more breath and then hands to the floor. Step it all the way back. Come forward to plank pose and lower knees down, chin and chest down. Ashtangasana, eight-pointed chaturanga. Inhale to your cobra. Stretch your legs back, inhale. Lift the chest, tone into the spine, hold on to the front side, and then exhale, bring it back down, push back, child's pose, big toes together, knees apart, one breath, downward facing dog. We're gonna stay in down dog and move right and left side, and then down dog and then right and left side for a few more poses. This time, step your right foot between your hands, left hand is either on the block or on the floor, squeeze your glutes, Take your right hand to your sacrum and lift your heart and your chest and come to your low lunge twist with your shoulder blades down on the back, lifting the heart, twisting into the whole body, bringing some good health and vitality to the spine and to that side body that we opened up with our crescent twists. And then exhale, bring it back down, step back, down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Left foot between the hands, right hand stays down, lift into the belly button and sweep that left arm up to the sky. Check and see that your sacrum feels nice and even and supported from the lower abs. And the left arm can come up to the sky. Lift high on the back leg. A few more breaths right here. And exhale, bring it all the way back down. Step it back, downward facing dog. Come to your plank pose, shoulders and wrists are stacked. A few breaths right here, and then take your knees down, chest and chin down. Inhale to your cobra. There's some good mobility into the spine. 
lifting the heart and the chest and exhale bringing it back down push back child's pose big toes together knees apart make your way to down dog please Arunuka Svanasana. Step your right foot between your hands and we'll continue on with our low lunge. This time we might take it down even a little bit further for one breath and then exhale and extend both legs. Right heel down, right toes up and then we'll take it back down and drink in some good new energy in through the heart space and then exhale, fold back and then inhale come on forward and we'll do two more then we're getting into that tighter connective tissue fascia in the hips in the spine in the legs wherever it is and if there is none that's great then we'll just have a great time if we're feeling any tightness then we'll bring the breath to it and then we'll sink it back down hands to the mat step back down dog just one breath here and then we'll move over to the second side, left foot between the hands. And we'll take it down a little bit further than the previous hold. And then exhale, heel down, toes up, go side flexion. Inhale, long spine. And drinking it in through the heart space in the whole spine. And then folding from there. It's like a, it's like a cat cow for the spine with big move for the legs. Exhale, fold. And we'll just keep it going. We'll do another two here. Inhale, exhale. With that chest raising when we're down in the lunge, there's a little bit more um, stretching going into the right hip flexor area. So if that starts here, then we do that. If not, we'll hold it back. Okay, exhale, hands down, step it back. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then come forward to plank pose. Knees down, chest and chin down, Ashtangasana. Inhale to your cobra, in your shoulder to outer shoulder. And exhale, bring it back down. Push back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. We'll go straight to down dog. And then from here, right foot between the hands. Bring your left knee down and extend and we'll come to a counter stretch from our previous pose. Come into Ardha Hanuman taking the top of the head towards the foot by engaging the abdominals and folding forward. A few breaths right here. Inhale and exhale. And gently bringing yourself to the front, step back, downward facing dog, left foot. Same thing, bring your left foot forward, right knee down, extend the front leg, draw side flexion onto that front foot, bring the top of the head towards the foot, third eye towards the knee. And then we'll in lift the belly button and engage so the whole spine is supported from the front side. And we'll give ourselves a few breaths right here. Inhale and exhale. One more breath and then gently bring yourself forward, support yourself with your hands, extend the back leg, step back, down dog. Come forward to your plank pose, shoulders and wrists are stacked, take the knees down, chin and chest down, Ashtangasana. And then inhale to cobra, in your shoulder to outer shoulder. The spine should feel a little bit more at ease exhale push back downward facing dog Adho Mukha Svanasana heels down lift the upper arm bones step your right foot between the hands and take your left knee down inhale arms forward pull the upper arm bones in take the arms up to the sky we can stay here or we can take it forward and lift the heart and the chest all the way low lunge Anjasana. Taking the hands to the inside of your right foot and then from there right arm up to the sky and from here right hand to the left foot. Pressing the hand and the foot into each other. Shoulder blades down on the back. Lift the heart. Give yourself a few breaths. 
right here. And exhale, release. Take the right arm up and then inside the right foot, step it back to your downward facing dog, please. Left foot between the hands, take your right knee down, take your arms forward, pull the upper arm bones in to have our shoulders and our hips neatly stacked and organized. Take the arms up to the sky and take yourself forward in the hips, lift the gaze, your chest, your shoulders, up and back, shoulder blades down on the back, a few more breaths, and then exhale, take your hands to the inside, of your left leg and the right hand stays down, left arm comes up. You can stay here or you can take your hand to your right foot and come into a different quad stretch, low lunge quad stretch. Lift the heart, the chest. Give yourself a few breaths right here and exhale. Release arm and leg down. Take your hands back down. Lift your back leg, step it back, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. And inhale, come to plank. Shoulders and wrists are stacked and then knees to the floor. And come all the way down. Inhale to your cobra, inner shoulder to outer shoulder. And exhale, bring it back down like a nice big wave. Come back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. From here, we're gonna step both feet over to the hands. We'll take a step or we'll take a hop and we'll come forward. Inhale, long spine and exhale, full top of the head towards the floor. Hands to hips, elbows to sky, root the feet and come all the way to standing and release the hands. And step your feet wide apart, please. So we have our feet wide apart, take the arms out to the side, take your right foot out, and then it becomes a little wider between the feet, the stance, so the heel goes right into the center of your left arch. Bend into the front knee and come to warrior two, please. Take the gaze over your second middle finger and arms out to the side. We'll stay one breath right here and flip the right palm up and we'll sail it up to the back. We're coming to that side body again and then forearm to thigh, left arm up and over and we'll take it up and over. We'll do three of these to check our side body and bring it up and over and we keep lifting into the belly button and we'll take it up and over and this next one, take the forearm to the thigh and then left arm up and then taking maybe the hand to the floor or to the block, squeeze the glutes, one arm down and one arm up to start. And then we root ourselves down strongly in the feet and the legs and maybe taking that left arm over the ear. Few breaths right here, pull the belly button in, awareness into the core and then left arm up, squeeze the glutes, the core, warrior two, and then we extend the legs and come to the second side. So let's turn those toes out. And then of course adjust so it feels comfortable. So that front heel goes right into that back arch. Palms facing down, come to warrior two. And we'll just sink down into the power of our Virabhadrasana pose. Just summon anything that we might have left along the way that really we could use to feel whole again. We'll just bring it in right here. Take that left palm up and take it all the way up and back, coming into that side crescent and then forearm to thigh, lift the right arm up and over and take it up and back, bicep to ear and forearm to thigh, sweeping it up and over and we'll take it back one more time, bicep to ear. And then from here, forearm to thigh, one arm up, one arm down, awareness to the belly button. And then from there, maybe the left fingers comes down, we squeeze the core, the glutes. And after we ground down even more to the legs and feet, then maybe the right arm feels comfortable coming over. We'll stay here, a few breaths. 
pushing into that back foot, taking the gaze underneath the upper arm. Take the arm up, take the gaze down, squeeze the legs and make your way back to your warrior two and extend the legs. And then from here, take your heels in, take the arms out and we'll sit down and we'll just do a little flush on the legs. We'll take it down and up just three, four times, even it out before we fold forward and then we'll come back to trikonasanas. And then from here, turn the toes in, heels slightly out, take the hands behind the interlace, roll the shoulders up and back and exhale, hinge and fold, top of the head towards the floor, shoulders up and back and then if it's available, take the arms up towards the sky, shoulders away from the ears. Take your hands back down to your sacrum, switch to your non-dominant clasp, and then we'll go for it again and see how that feels. Arms maybe up to the sky or maybe arms, hand stays onto the sacrum. And gently release the hands to the sacrum, hands to the hips, and then we'll come back up to standing. Power up the legs a little bit in a nice slow flow variant. So from here, take your right toes back out, arms out to the side, and we'll come to Trikonasana. So lengthen that whole right side, lengthen into the core, and hinge and fold yourself down with your right hand below the knee, and we'll come to Trikonasana, hand to the ankle, take the gaze up towards the sky, shoulder blades down on the back, grounding the feet down, one more breath, and then top of the hand to the hip and the gaze comes down and we bend the front leg, step it up into Ardha Chandrasana, keeping the um, supported leg slightly bent in the knee so the hip and the ankle are stacked, shoulder blades down and maybe that left arm lifts up, wake up all the way to the toes, pinky toe, fourth toe and we'll stay right here, nice and anchored and at the same time just vibrating on a nice high new frequency. And then we'll bend into that standing leg and sink back down to Trikonasana. Gaze up to the sky and then hand to the hip. Take the gaze back down and then we'll come all the way back up and second side. Take your left toes out and the left heel in. Lengthen, lengthen and lift that whole left side body and Sink your hand down to the ankle and then the right arm is up. You might have a block, of course. We'll bring that in at any time. Belly button lifts in. The gaze can come up to the thumb. And we'll hold a triangle pose and just kind of let just the stance and the turn and the rotation of the whole body work its way into the deeper layers and release any stagnation. We'll stay one more breath. And then we'll take the hand to the hip and the gaze comes down, bend the front leg. We'll step it up into Ardha Chandrasana, balancing half moon, lifting with that right glute area, lower abs. There's a bend into that left knee. The gaze can stay down for grounding. Spread the toes on your right leg. Hold the belly button in. Give yourself one more breath right here and then hand to hip, and then we'll sink it all the way back down to Trikonasana. Hand can come to the floor this time around. One more breath, and then gaze down, hand to hip, ground into the legs, and come back up to standing, and arms out to the side. Take your heels back in, bend all the way down, and sit in a nice power stand, and then we inhale and exhale. Exhale and inhale. And we'll just bring it in and take it back out and move the energy around us with our arms with our hands with our own energy field we'll do another three here inhale and exhale and we might just sit a little bit deeper down and get some good energy going in the whole body it's like we get to stir it up a little bit with our hands and then we'll straighten the arms and bring the arms up and come into star pose just a nice Big full body stretch, grounding down and rising up all at the same time. 
and then exhale, hands down, and come to the front of your mat, please. Feet hip widths apart, inhale, arms up to the sky, and exhale, hinge and fold, Uttanasana, forward fold. Release the head, letting the head relax this way and that way, taking the hands underneath your feet, Hasta Padasana, giving the wrists a nice um, relaxing stretch into the whole kind of palm of the hand and into the muscle of the thumb, like the whole area right there. And I like to even squeeze my toes a little bit around the wrists and if there's anything that feels like it needs adjustment, then feet and hands is excellent. Hasta Padasana. Top of the head towards the floor, elbows out to the side. And gently release the hands. Take the feet a little wider, turn the toes out and come to Malasana. You could sit on a block here. You can sit on two blocks here, hands together and lifting the side of the side, the side of the body, the side body. So that, the, so that we can kind of open a little bit more in towards the hips. Because if we elongate the whole side and the spine, then it's like we get a little bit more space to kind of root down through the hips. And we'll stay right here. A few more breaths. Inhale and exhale. Take your right hand down and your left hand up to the sky. Checking in with our waist, stretching into the deeper connective tissue and the fascia around the hips and the waist. Exhale, take it back down and switch second side. Left hand down and right arm up. And we stay right here. A few breaths. And exhale, take it all the way back down. And then we're going to sit back down onto our seat. Take the feet together for Baddha Konasana. So we have our feet together. Hands can be around the ankles. And then we get to really lift in towards the whole um, seat um, side body. Again, the seat anchors down and the spine lifts and the sacrum lifts up a little bit. And the neck pulls back and the shoulders away from the ears. And then maybe there's a little bit more opening in towards hips. We'll stay here a few more breaths. And slowly release and open up into Upavishta Konasana. We'll come back into Baddha Konasana again in a supine form, but for now we'll come right here. And we did a little rotation earlier, so we come back to that with the right arm up and over, sit bones are down, and then we'll come with the left arm up and over. We'll come into like a little lift in our trikonasana. We'll see how that feels. We'll slowly build up to it. Inhale and exhale. And then this time around, let's take that right arm all the way up and over, keep our core and skim the surface and then come up and over. And then we'll take it the other way around. Bringing it all the way up and over, and up and over. And we'll do it one more time. This time, take your left hand behind your sacrum, heels down and lift up. And exhale, bring it back down. And inhale, exhale, right hand back, and then lift the hips up and look up. And exhale, bring it back down one more each side. Take it up and around, lifting up, and exhale, bring it back around, and right hand back, left arm lifts up, hips up, and then exhale, bring it back down, arms out, find your big toes with your peace fingers, and hinge and fold. Bring in a block for the forehead, anything that works and makes you feel better. Take it down, Upavishta Kunasana. A few breaths right here. And then gently take it all the way back up. Hands under the knees. 
and bring the legs all the way together. Bring out your blocks or a rolled blanket, anything that you have that feels good. We will take a block right below the shoulder blades, so it's in the upper middle back. And if you've done yoga with me before here, you know that I like to put it right below those shoulder blades to get into that upper thoracic, middle upper thoracic, kind of stiffer part, hands behind the head. And then we're gonna roll up and over and take the head towards the floor and the elbows out. And we can stay right here for now. Elbows can be up, elbows can be out. So we can, that's one version that we can do. The other version would be to lift the blocks uh, or the one block a little higher. And you can certainly have another block for the head. So check and see where it works for you. So this is a little bit narrower. It takes kind of a little bit more precise area. I like to think of it like T8 area. And feet can come together. And then we can take that head up and over and drop it down towards the floor. And we come into fish pose, Baddha Konasana style. Few breaths right here. One more breath. And then slowly release the hands. Take the hands by the head. Come back up, close your legs and make your way off of the block. There isn't really like any graceful way to come off, but if we can kind of hold on to that core, then coming up becomes a little bit easier. Now we'll come all the way back down, take the feet on each side of the mat, take the arms out, take the right knee in the center, and up and over, left knee in the center, and up and over, and up and over. We'll do one more time right here. And then gently, we'll take the feet flat. We'll take the block underneath the sacrum, medium, low or high, whichever works for Satya Vanda Sarvanjasana to get a lift into the hips, a lift into the lower abs, to the organs. And we can stay right here. We can take the hands around the yoga mat and kind of check and see that our shoulders are open. It feels comfortable. We can stay right here. Sometimes it feels better to have that block just slightly further down. Sometimes it feels better to have it a little bit further up, but just make sure it's not in the lower back on the soft tissue on the kidneys, but on that triangle bony part at the base of the spine. So wherever you are right now, let's summon your energy, bring the legs in and take the legs up to the sky. And we stay here, just reversing that blood flow and checking our balance and checking that the core is with us and just getting a nice lift on the legs, getting a reverse of the blood flow, getting a nice anchoring of the femurs, rooting in. We'll stay one more breath and then exhale, take the knees, bend them back down, come up onto the toes, lift the sacrum off of the block and take your sacrum back down. This time, take your hands on the base of your quads and pressing the quads away and getting that nice length for the whole lower back. And we'll stay right here. The next one is Urdhva Dhanurasana, if you would like to, then we can come up into a back bed. Or you can come back and take a block either underneath your sacrum or underneath your um, upper back or maybe upper back and head. So do one back bend that works for you or maybe a back bend without the blocks, which will look like this. Satya Bandha Sarvanjasana can be right here, firing up the glutes, lower abs, hamstrings. From there, if you felt like your shoulders and your strength was there and the mobility then maybe hands by the shoulders and then from there come up to the top of the head i like to come up on the toes lock my hands in and make my way up to our wheel pose and hugging the biceps and the triceps 
into the middle, more triceps, but definitely biceps too. And then having that ripple effect on the whole spine, just kind of shaking off anything that doesn't serve us. We'll lift it up and off, whichever back bend variation that you're in. One more breath and then exhale, bring it all the way back down and we'll come back, feet flat, hands on the quads, one breath, take your knees in towards the chest as, as you're extending your sacrum down and as the lower back lifts off of the mat. So it's, a, it's that knee to chest we did in the beginning of class, grounding the femurs and releasing any tension in the lower back, right leg up to the sky, spread the toes right here. You can pull the hamstrings with your hands down on the right side. And that way, hips and shoulders, and we're especially focusing on bringing the hips back into a nice new harmonious way of being. And then switch to the second side, left leg up, right leg forward, bringing it all the way down in the hamstring region. A few more breaths right here. And then we'll bring it all the way back down. And just to kind of make sure the core feels plugged in, we'll give ourselves like 20 chest lifts here. We'll take a block between the knees and just kind of buffering in and checking in that we are all plugged in towards our end of our practice. So now we'll take that lower back into the mat from holding on to the belly button, right from the pubic bone, belly button, sternum, that whole area, hands behind the head, and then we lift the chest up and bring it back down and squeeze the block. We have the block there so that the knees and the hips stay nice and still and organized. And we lift up and bring it back down and lifting up and bring it back down and lifting it up and bring it back down. And we just keep on going. I think I said 20, right? So we have to keep on going a few more here. I think we might be up towards 10 here in two more and then we'll just keep it going and if we can we'll do a little hold on the top and a little hold at the bottom hold on the top and hold on the bottom because that way our muscles have like a way of remembering like what's going on and can kind of hug in and build some of that strength so it's not just like a continuous movement and a wear and tear but we're building some good strength and some good Kind of plugging in after all the stretching we did we'll just plug everything all the way back in how about like four more here holding on to those lower abs squeezing the block and we'll do two more here lifting up and lowering down exhaling on the way up and inhaling on the way down i think we have one more this sounds about right and then we'll take it down ah take the block away and put it to the side take your knees into the chest and we roll ourselves up and straighten the legs and come to our Paschimottanasana forward fold. Now we can use all of that. We have done all kinds of flexion and extension on our spine. So from here, we'll sit upright. Just take the arms all the way up and seat down. Bring the rib cage in and awareness to the belly button and then hinge and fold forward from here. And you can take a strap if you have. You can take a towel if you needed to hold on to something to make the arms and the feet meet somehow. From here, lengthen the spine, exhale. Take the hands, if available, either on the big toes or on the outside of the feet and then elbows out to the side, top of the head, towards the feet. Closing our practice. Some of you might even take a block um, right in front of the feet and get like a little bit of a more help to stretch into the lower back and the side body and the quadratus lumborum with a whole bunch of love to the whole back body and holding on and supporting with the front top of the head towards the feet elbows slightly out shoulder blades down on the back closing up our practice with a nice comfortable engaging forward fold Pashimottanasana, stretching out the whole back body. 
few more breaths. And then gently extending and coming upright. We'll take one more downward facing dog to anchor all of that in that we just did. Downward facing dog, please. Adho Mukta Svanasana. You can step your feet back. You can walk your heels down. You can pedal a little bit this way and that way. And then slowly taking the knees down and coming back to a comfortable seat where we started today. If you're sitting on a block or a pillow or a blanket, take anything that works perfectly for your sit bones and that feels good for your knees. Ideally, the knees would be a little lower than the hips. And we'll come back to a comfortable seat. We can close our eyes or they can be, drishti can be down towards the tip of the nose. If you prefer to have your eyes open. And then we'll come back to our breath, any breath that feels good for you. Just taking some breaths that you are feeling all the way into the deepest layer of the body and then all the way back out. And that way we get to just kind of uh, exchange the energies that we've been um, working with and maybe we have uh, released some energies and then maybe we are open to bring in some new updated energies and we'll do that with the breath. We'll take three breaths together. So sitting nice and tall. How do you like to breathe? Mouth open, mouth, mouth closed, whichever works. And then we'll come back to normal breathing. Hands can stay on the lap or they can stay on the knees. And we're just gonna slide into a few moments of meditation to, while we have kind of made all this nice openness in the body, we'll take advantage of that and sit with this and sit with our new energies. And I thank you so much for joining me today for this class. And I cannot wait to see you again in the next class. Please read below what we did and uh, a little bit about myself and my yoga retreats. And I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this class. Thank you so much. Namaste.
Wednesday of the week. Thank you for joining.